Hello, and welcome to today's webinar entitled Virtualized Cell Point Identity IQs Database with Radiant One for Use in LDAP Applications, WAM, and Federation. My name is Kim Locke. I'm with Radiant Logic, and I'll be your moderator for today's program. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that your lines will be muted for the duration of the webinar. However, if you have a question, you may enter it in the GoToWebinar window, and we will have a Q&A session at the end if time allows. If we are not able to get to your question during the webcast, we'll send a personal email to follow up. Also, this webcast will be recorded and sent out, along with a copy of the presentation slides within the next 24 hours. Our speakers today are Rusty Deaton, Radiant Logic Practice Lead with IDM Works. Rusty has extensive experience with SailPoint and Radiant One implementations. He has five plus years of direct IDAM experience and engagements with organizations in every industry and vertical. His current research and learning focuses include test-driven development, Python, and incorporating DevOps best practices into implementations. And Wade Ellery, Senior Solutions Architect at Radiant Logic. Wade has extensive experience in enterprise IT direct and channel software and services sales and management. He has in-depth knowledge and experience in enterprise IAM, IAG, risk and compliance and IT security challenges. We'll start with you, Rusty. Okay, sounds good. So uh, my name is Rusty and I'm here to talk to you about Radiant and SailPoint today. So if you guys have any questions during their presentation, go ahead and ask away. Um, so a little about me, uh, I've been in, um, it, it, I've been in IDAM for about five years now. Uh, I've been working in information technology as a whole for about 10. Um, I, I've been in all sorts of fun technical scenarios around a wide range of industries. Uh, just a, a quick snippet about my firm. Uh, we've been in business well over a decade. Uh, we offer a huge range of services, as you'll see on the next slide. Um, so being in the industry as long, long as we have, uh, we've worked with an absolutely massive range of vendors, um, which you'll see right here. Um, and we have a great understanding of how they all fit together. Right, Rady can actually integrate with a good deal of these uh, vendor solutions that you see on the screen right now, but that's, uh, that's a whole other side of talks, right? Um, and here you can see some of our clients. Uh, some of these I've actually worked with personally, um, but that's really not what we're here to talk about today. Today I'm here to talk to you about how Radiant and SailPoint together are awesome, right? You can use Radiant One and SailPoint to do some really amazing stuff. Um, so the, the question is, how, right? Um, there's three real steps. You aggregate, you feed, and you decide. So uh, the first step is to aggregate. Now, we need to understand that one of the truly great things about Radiant is its capacity to take disparate sources, um, LDAP backends, um, SQL database tables, uh, REST um, endpoints, even flat files pushed over, um, you know, our, our life is, uh, it revolves around the comma, right? So why not flat files? Um, and we can, then aggregate this data and provide an enterprise-friendly view of it that can be easily consumed by other applications. Uh, so SailPoint, of course, is one of those applications that can consume this enterprise-friendly view. So we can feed that data into SailPoint. Um, without Radiant, right, there's a, and without this sort of pre-processing, that Radiant allows you to do of the data without um, being able to vet the data and clean it up. Um, you require uh, almost a, uh, I would say, a significantly extended effort to be able to provide the same quality of, of data that um, you would get from piping it through Radiant using those same channels of, of aggregation and, and distribution. So next, you, you've got this data, right? You've got it cleaned up and you've got it pushed over to SailPoint, right? 
finally, you have to decide what to do with that data. So basically, any joiner, mover, lever, attestation process, any any business logic related workflow is then prime primed for sale point to operate with. Uh, since Radian has really done a lot of the heavy lifting on how to manage that data, how to how to really make everything fit together. Um, so what you can then do is um, you can not only use Radiant as, as the back end for those decisions, you can also then feed decisions that are made in SailPoint back into Radiant. Now, um, with the two use cases that I'm about to get into, um, we'll, we'll get into how that works in a little bit further detail. So our first use case is a Fortune 500 company with uh, a ton of mergers and acquisitions over the, the course of their lifetime. Uh, they've accrued, uh, I wanna say, probably 20 separate Active Directory domains. Um, and not just Active Directory domains, we're talking um, various databases and legacy data sources that need to be merged in. Um, in our current scope of operation, though, we're just talking Active Directory. Um, that's that's all they want to take care of for now. Um, they want to be able to provide a consistent life cycle um, for users, you know, entering the organization, maybe transferring to another part of the organization and eventually, well, not eventually, but hopefully um, leaving the organization um, in, in that IDAM process, right? And um, we need to be able to have um, that consistency look like AD the whole way. Um, because this, this may communicate with, say, Office 360 in the future, or it may be used for Azure or uh, something to that effect, right? So let's take a let's take a look at how that might look from a, a high level architectural standpoint. So you would have each of the active directory instances feed into Radiant. Now this can be done um, a, a number of ways you could cache any number of ways that you'd like to, but the idea is that Radiant is then the gatekeeper for those active directory instances. It, it holds them in place, SailPoint draws on that data, and then SailPoint in turn is able to communicate with the users for those various processes. Um, it actually works out very cleanly and uh, for the first phase of this particular use case, I think we got it up and running with, I wanna say eight of the critical active directories that they needed within three months. So it was a pretty quick turnaround. Our second use case that I wanna discuss uh, that I worked on personally is a very large organization with 100,000 employees. Well, more than 100,000 employees. Uh, it's a national organization, massively siloed, uh, 14 separate departments, and all of them are highly autonomous. Um, but they, they have a collective need to unify user information across this organization, and it needs to be, in some cases, as real-time as possible. Um, for instance, door access. Um, if someone, for whatever reason, needs to leave the organization, they wanted door access to be cut off right then, right at that moment. So uh, it needed to be near real time. The minute that the button was pushed, hopefully the, the access would be revoked and you'd be able to move forward. Um, and we would need to be able to feed those decisions um, to other departments. And those other departments may refuse to use sales point um, just by the structure of the, the larger organization. So we actually came up with a fairly clever way of doing it, um, and Radiant enabled it. So let me show you. So um, what you'll see here, right, is uh, a whole panoply of various data sources connected to Radiant One. We have uh, in this in this slide anyway, Active Directory, several um, SQL databases that may represent human resources, physical access. Um, there were several others, but those were kind of the key ones. Um, building data, which was um, not your standard um, 
setup. We had to shoehorn the data in. Uh, we had several REST interfaces that we connected to, and it all pulled into an enterprise view for the user that we abstracted to a SailPoint friendly view um, offered to SailPoint, which then you could perform all of your um, all of your joiner, mover, lever, uh, all of your business logic related workflows in there. And then um, what we did is we actually would pull information back from SailPoint into Radiant, further fortifying the enterprise view. So for instance, we could say, did you take this specific training? Yes or no? And if there was a self-attestation self process where the user said, yes, I took that training, we would have it in the enterprise view, which we could then offer right, in, a, in what I like to call a fortified view off to a separate user case um, where uh, a whole different set of users could have that information without ever necessarily having to touch sale point, right? So they get the benefits of sale point without having to interact with sale point. Uh, and that can, that can provide a great deal of, of power being able to abstract the IAM workflows and present it in a manner that is simplified and direct. So um, if, if you take away anything from this, remember that Radiance can fix some otherwise very hard issues in a sale point implementation. It can, it can minimize the amount of time that you have to spend cleaning up the data, and it can help get rid of some of the very painful issues when it comes to providing connection, right? And then you can use sale point, right, to feed back into Radiant to fortify that data and offer it to other services. And that an enterprise view that is responsive and flexible can be achieved for your organization, right? We can create whole pictures of users, and this is amazing, right? We do not have to have a truly siloed approach. We can have everything brought together if we want, and it doesn't have to be painful. So that said, right? Uh, any questions or comments? Actually, Rusty, uh, we're going to take questions at the very end. They're submitted uh, online by text, so we'll open that up for questions uh, when we're done. This is Wade. Um, everyone's oh, muted right now by nature of the webinar, so that's why you got <laughs> crickets after you said that. No, that's that's fine. I'm totally cool with that. I, I acquiesce. The floor is yours, sir. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, and, and Rusty, um, thank you for an excellent uh, introduction there. Let me make sure I'm sharing the right screen here. There we go. And I want to thank you for that introduction and uh, the real world use cases around integrating Radiant Logic and, and SailPoint. I am seeing more and more synergies now in the world of, of Radiant Logic and, and SailPoint in a way that where it's really a hand and glove model here. There's a tremendous amount of functionality in both products and very little overlap. And we'll explain that as we go a little further. So you end up with really a force multiplier when you talk about putting the two platforms together and letting each do what it does best and then delivering for the customer relatively a complete solution in much faster, much more agile, much more uh, dynamic deployment capabilities than you would normally see in a extensive rollout of an identity management platform. So to that end, I'd like to go ahead and take a little time here to sort of delve a little bit deeper into the Radiant Logic side to explain that sort of the left hand of, of Rusty's slides to show you some of the work we do on the Radiant Logic side and why the power of our ability to correlate and join and union and manage and manipulate and clean up that data is so important and how that makes life easier for SailPoint and for any other application that needs to consume identity information. Um, I'm going to steal one of your, your terms, though. I really love the idea of panoply. Uh, that is an excellent way to describe the complex and diverse nature of siloed identity sources that we, we deal with every day at our large customers. It's a panoply of, of information and identities that need to be brought together. So 
that really is an illustration of, of, the, of the world we live in. And this is not to the fault of anyone in particular. This is not a bad IT design that somehow rippled through the whole industry. It's really the nature of the way IT started initially. Everything was its own island. Every application thought it was the center of the universe. It had its own users stored inside itself. It had its own uh, fat clients for authenticating and for uh, provisioning and deprovisioning and managing those systems. And they were completely alone because they had a set of functions they had to deliver and they wanted to eliminate dependencies on anybody else. But quickly, when you start to look at deploying two or three or four of these islands, you realize that this is a very complex system to try and manage and a tremendous amount of overhead in replicating the identity management processes for each individual in silo. So we moved towards the idea of some directory-based scenarios where we actually centralized the users in a central directory, and then we were able to point the application to that directory and say, at least for the user's identity and password and credentials and group memberships, you can look externally, and I can set that up once, and then I can use it for multiple applications. And that became pretty good scenario, but we started back in the days when hardware was very expensive, when WAN connections were very slow. So the ideas of directories couldn't be global and universal like they can today. They had to be very regional. So I ended up with multiple domains, multiple AD domains. And then I had applications that had their own finicky requirements for data a certain way. So I had to stand up an LDAP directory to hold certain attributes or rename certain uh, fields and labels to match an application's requirements. And then other applications really wanted to store everything in a database. So now I had to stand up databases and manage all that information. And so I ended up with all these repositories again, somewhat externalized from my applications, but still in their individual silos. And I brought in provisioning solutions to try and synchronize information. And when you first started with the company on day one, I wanted to create you in these 10 different backends so you could have access to 20 different applications or in 100 different backends. But now you've got different credentials, different identifiers. Again, this becomes a complex environment. It wasn't solved by simply adding in the idea of a directory as opposed to the identities being inside the applications. And then to really sort of frustrate the effort of, of getting your arms around the problem, we opened up the world to the cloud and to the internet. And the idea that applications and endpoints that you're communicating with may not even be on premise. They may not even be things you control. They may be SaaS applications that are hosted by a third party vendor or a partner in your industry that you have to connect to and provide identity information to and provision and deprovision. And this just sort of explodes the whole challenge. And this is what we're facing today in the identity management space is really a, an explosion in the endpoints that I need to be able to provide authentication, authorization, and compliance and auditing to, and an explosion in the number of places that I have identity information stored and that I have to leverage and be able to make available in other situations, and other scenarios. So the question becomes, how do I deal with this? Well, on the application side, what we created, and this was 10 years ago with NetTegrity's original web access management solution, which became CA SiteMinder, and now has been rebranded to CA Single Sign-On, and has companion products in almost every vertical stack of an access management product for web access management, I started the concept of Single Sign-On. Let's make it easy for the user. Let's give them one place to go, present me with one set of credentials, I'll authenticate those credentials, and then from that point forward, I'll never ask you again to validate your identity for any application that you go to that's within my control, within my web access management sphere, within the session that you're operating. So for the end user, this was a panacea. Uh, instead of having 20 different IDs and passwords written down on a sticky note on the side of my computer or under my keyboard, I had one credential to authenticate, maybe it is even logging into my desktop, and now wham, I'm into all my, no pun intended, into all my applications without any additional effort. But for the IT administrator, this didn't solve our problem of, whoa, my gosh, all those identities that I have to provide down to this web access management system are still distributed all across my environment. They're still in multiple different places. And not only are they in different platforms, but they're in different protocols, they're in different structures. A directory and a database don't look at all like each other when you start looking at them at a, at a 
basic attribute level. You can't easily interchange one or the other. You can't even interchange between Active Directory and an, an LDAP directory like CA LDAP or, or Open a, um, Open DJ. Those LDAP directories have a different schema. They have a different language or label for the way they identify information. We don't even call things user ID. It could be SAM account name. So there's a real challenge in mushing all that together. So how do you provide the, the wonderful benefits of single sign-on that the end user got to the administrator on the IT side? And this is where Radiant Logic comes into play. Radiant Logic provides the capability to connect to all the different backend platforms that you have identity information in. And now when I say backend platform, I only mean backend from the sense that it is uh, identity information that is normally sits behind an application. But this may be information, as you can see on the diagram here in the bottom left, it may be external to your organization in a partner directory. It may be applications that are sitting in the cloud like Salesforce that have their own identity information provisioned into them and configured locally that you want to include in your global profile that you want to be able to pull back into that 360 degree view of your user's account. And if you notice across the bottom here, I'm connecting to all these different systems, but again, we have that challenge. A database doesn't look like a directory, doesn't look like AD, and Salesforce looks nothing like any of those four, so how do I bring all this together? And this is the power of Radiant Logic. There's a very rich logic engine in that blue sphere that surrounds our golden pyramid that allows you to manage and manipulate and control and massage and clean up and transform and translate the identity information in as many ways as you need to in order to provide it to each application just as that application wants to see that information as if that application was the center of the universe, was the only thing that mattered. And for each application simultaneously from one source of identity information. Now take a moment and let that sink in because that is a transformational statement in terms of the way management of identities work. Traditionally, if you need something a little bit different, you had to stand up a different platform. You had to stand up a different directory, different database. You had to provision different application. You had to do things particular to that application, and those stood alone. With Radiant Logic, because we can do virtualization, we can create multiple views, we can appear to be separate entities for multiple separate applications, access management solutions, governance platforms, but all that information can be centralized, all that information can be provisioned in one place, it can be audited and, and uh, attested to in one place, it can be managed in one place, so that you don't have this massive proliferation. And if a new requirement comes along, I simply generate another view of that information so that it's available for that application and that application's requirement. So primarily the function has been authentication, the user comes in and I have to validate their credentials and their credentials may be spread across multiple um, sources of identity information. So I want to be able to make sure I can route those credentials to the proper source. If that source is not highly available, I want to be able to store those credentials locally if I choose to. That's an option. Some people do want to. Some people don't want to under any circumstances. So these are all very flexible options within the, within the product. And the ability to then provide that authentication back to a portal, to a federated access system, to a web, app, web access management, directly to an application, whatever needs to do that authentication so that users get access when they provide valid credentials, whether it's two-factor or forms-based or however that authentication may come through. But we go further than that because what we've built now is a rich profile of user attributes. We know information from your HR profile, from your AD profile, from your additional LDAP. We have information pulled down from Salesforce, from Azure AD, from ServiceNow. We can pull this data together and build this rich profile that allows you to now build groups around that data based on attributes. So I can do complex dynamic groups with things like everyone in sales in Chicago that's in large accounts is in the VP sales group and they get access to special pricing because they work with large accounts. But that's not generally available to people who don't have those attributes. Now I don't have to provision and deprovision and add users, remove users from groups manually. I can do it based on their attributes and their entitlements within the system. When I'm linking to something like SailPoint, I can use SailPoint's entitlements and their ability to build rich 
uh, roles within the organization to provide those dynamic groups and that automatic access and authorization control. And then when that person's profile shifts, when they move, when their project ends, when their manager changes, all those adjustments are made automatically. The, the relief of administrative overhead is amazing. And then when you start getting into mergers and acquisitions, and as mentioned earlier, the need to be able to do migration and consolidation of identities between multiple sources. When I merge two companies together, some organizations want to operate autonomously. They operate as little silos, and you've got to be able to give an overarching view of all their data. But other organizations are going to want to be able to migrate those identities into one uh, active directory or one directory store, and we can do that virtually very quickly with Radiant Logic, and then over time allow you to move those ad accounts without the end user even knowing anything has happened. So when I'm providing authentication, it's simply a matter of the application making the request. Um, that request comes to Radiant Logic's federated identity server, and we then can make a proxy call back to AD, providing them with the proper identifier, validating the password is accurate, and then pull back a bind that we send back to the application, letting the application know the user's been authenticated properly. But you may have a scenario where I have multiple AD domains, and I have user overlap. So if I have users in multiple domains, how do I handle that? Well, traditionally, the access management solution would chain those domains together. It would simply look in domain A first and search for the user. If it didn't find it, it would hop over to domain B, search for the user, hop over to domain C, search for the user. And eventually, in domain D, it would find the user. And then it would go ahead and try and authenticate its credentials. But the challenge with that is that you spend all the time going through the first three domains looking for that user while the user is waiting for that authentication to take place. And this can take a fair amount of time if you have a large organization. It also generates a tremendous amount of back-end traffic. We have a large uh, company that consolidated all of their subsidiaries, nine different AD domains together. They're generating 13 million back-end calls a day to their AD infrastructure trying to authenticate users for sign-on into shared applications. Using Radiant Logic, we're able to collapse that down to what appears to be one flat list of users across the whole organization. Those domains are still in place. They still function locally. They still provide all the legacy domain access and controls that are necessary for each of those subsidiaries. But from a global view, they appear to be one big flat list. So does John exist? Yes, he does. I answered that question in milliseconds. And I know exactly where John is stored because I have a pointer back to his AD domain. So then the credentials for John are presented by the Access Management Platform, and I route that immediately back to the back end, validate his credentials, send back a bind, and in milliseconds, John's authenticated to the shared platforms. Now, what if John has two accounts and he uses the password for the second AD domain, not the primary AD domain? I can simply set up the system to do bind order that says, hey, look in domain A first. If you don't find them there, or if you, if you find them there but his credentials don't work, Pop over to domain C where you also have an account for John. If his credential matches there, go ahead and let him in anyway. So now when John is part of a big merger and acquisition, John doesn't have to now remember which password do I use for global access and which one do I use to access my local domain and which one do I use when I'm in corporate headquarters. It doesn't matter. Use the ID and the password you have. We'll figure out if it's valid. If it's valid, you get in. So it's, again, a, a way of making this platform much less friction based, much easier for the end user's experience. And from an architectural standpoint here, if you look at this particular slide, this kind of gives you the nuts and bolts of what we do all in one place. On the left-hand side represents all the sources of identity information we connect to. And as I mentioned, we are platform agnostic and we're standards based. We'll talk to anybody that talks to standard protocol. So JDBC for databases, LDAP for AD and directories, web services, REST, uh, SKIM, AD, uh, whatever the acronym is on the back end, if it's standard protocol, we'll connect to it. We'll be able to bring that information into Radiant Logic. And these can be two-way connectors. We can provision information back out into those back end sources if you want us to deliver updates, changes, modifications, normalization of data, whatever you want to do. There's a whole rules-based engine for providing that capability. Now, once we bring the information in, we're going to do virtualization and aggregation. We're going to let you see all those users in what appears to be a common format, a common directory structure. Even databases, we can build a schema based on the 
column headers in, a, in database tables so you can start to interact with those as a, as a attribute based pair. And then you have the options to aggregate those together to find the places where John has multiple accounts and link those accounts together. But also you want to be careful not to do inappropriate aggregation. You want to be able to disambiguate if I have J Smith in one platform that's John Smith and I have J Smith in another platform that's Joan Smith. I don't want to put John and Joan together. They're not the same person. So I want to be able to make sure that I don't inadvertently link accounts that aren't supposed to be together. And again, that's that powerful logic engine to be able to do that linking and correlation and understanding and then integrating together attributes from different sources. So in a global profile, I can have AD information, I can have information from an HR database, I can have information from a SailPoint uh, application in the cloud, I can have information from a partner directory, I can have all that information in one profile in a set of attributes labeled as my application expects it. So if my AD uses first name and it's, it calls it given name, but my application wants to use F name as first name as a name, I can remap that attribute. Or if in my applications, some have the state represented as a spelled out California, some do C-A-L-I-F period, like I learned in elementary school, some do capital C, capital A, or capital C, little a. All these variations are all California, but it's computer system, a, a role management profile has a hard time understanding those four different things are the same state. In Radiant Logic, we can map all that to a capital C, capital A. So when you do a search for a capital C, capital A, you get back everybody that has any form of California in their uh, state identifier. So you can bring that information together, clean it up, make it much more easy to do groups and roles and build context, as we'll see later. We can store this information locally on our HDAP store, which is highly available, highly performant. So when you've done all this complex aggregation, you've done this heavy lifting, you've done this work, you can make that result appear to be a physical representation of the user in Radiant Logic so that you can access it at the speed of a directory. So you can do authentication authorization against that data without having to recalculate those relationships and those dynamic groups in real time. If you remember the rollout of healthcare.gov eight, nine years ago, it was a debacle in that it took forever for people to figure out whether or not they got a discount on their health insurance because that platform, after you filled in your forms and hit submit, was going back in real time to databases in the IRS and Social Security and other places in the federal government to try and pull together information about you and make a join and make calculations and make a determination in real time. You can't expect a user to wait for that kind of heavy lifting. It's great if you're doing reporting. If you're generating at a station reports and you're generating reports that can run overnight and that are reviewed on a daily basis or a weekly basis, that's fine. But we're talking authentication authorization. We're talking in the speed of a directory. We're talking the speed of the internet and, and Amazon and Google where customers expect things to happen instantly. And that's what Radiant Logic delivers. And then on the far right hand side there, you see the protocols. Again, as we were protocol agnostic coming in, we're protocol agnostic going out. We can represent this data simultaneously to look like an LDAP directory. So if you make an LDAP query, you get back the user information. But if you've got a reporting tool like Crystal Reports and you want to use SQL to query this looking like a SQL table because Crystal Reports thinks everything is columns and rows, then we can give it back as multiple SQL tables in terms of views. If you have a web services call, you've got a a SOA interface, you've got an application that's using uh, SKIM or any of other protocols, SOAP. We can present the information in XML, we present the information in that protocol so when it's queried, the application sees exactly what it's looking for and without that extra translational layer. And then if you need to do REST for mobile apps or for any application built by a developer less than 25 years old, you're going to be able to get back JSON responses to all your queries. And those can be very complex responses with hierarchical data in one query. So it makes it very efficient, very powerful to manage that. So again, this kind of gives you a, a view of that same process here. Connections on the left-hand side, profile integration, that logic engine on the left-hand side, building that multi multiple view, correlated, cleaned up uh, identity information. And then the delivery engine on the right-hand side, they are packaging that into exactly the model you need to, building relationships that don't even necessarily exist on the back ends, as we'll see in a moment, and then publishing that across the attributes and the 
the uh, protocols that you need for each of your consuming applications. And the really nice thing about this platform is if I acquire another company, I simply plug them in on the left-hand side, and all the applications that I have already integrated into Radiant Logic just think the world got bigger. They see those new users as if they were the same as any other user in the organization. So there is no other integration other than bringing them into Radiant Logic and normalizing their data. So I can merge in new users and make them information available to them very quickly and very easily. And the same with an application. I bring a new application in and I create a view for it and connect it to Radiant Logic. And now that application is accessible by any of the users from any of my sources as long as they're authorized to be able to access that application. They will have the connectivity through to that. They don't have to do any extra work. There is no system by system integration where I create this N squared problem of every new application has to be integrated with 25 different backends. It's a one to one relationship on both sides. That makes a tremendous value to the whole process. So how are we doing this? How are we virtualizing this information and delivering that identity data? And really the key here is the concept of a join and a union. And these are database terms or, or data management terms you may be familiar with. A join is simply saying, hey, I have a user with a certain amount of information and I wanna add to the information he has. So I have an account in AD, I have my AD profile with all my AD information in it, but I also have information in a SQL database. I have HR data about my hire date. I've got information about my, uh, my enrollment in the benefits program or what my number of deductions is. All that kind of data that is not necessarily stuff you'd look for or find in Active Directory, but I want to include it in the complete profile because I have a benefits management package that needs to authenticate against AD, but then it needs to be able to read that data. I don't want to have to have it point to multiple places and trying to sort this out. I also don't want to have it have to deal with overlapping accounts. So I'm going to join that information together. So my profile now looks like an Active Directory profile to that application, but it's got extra stuff in it, but I never had to extend the schema in AD. So I don't have this giant ever-growing AD schema of, of attributes for different applications. I have a very simple, clean, efficient platform for authentication, and I've got a rich profile. But at the same time, I also may need to do a union. I may need to say, that's great, but I've got more than one AD. I've got five ADs. So how do I build a view that looks like one big AD when I have five different backends? I create a union, just like the Union of the United States. I bring all those different ADs together and can represent them as one entity without changing those backends. Because the challenge that a lot of our customers face is, and this is true of a lot of mergers and acquisitions. I'll talk to customers that merge. We're just talking with one of my uh, salespeople about a giant department or uh, grocery store. Two massive grocery stores merged five years ago. They are still in the middle of trying to get those two organizations to work together, and they just bought a giant drugstore. And now they've got to go through the whole process again when the first merger wasn't completed because the, the idea of actually moving all that and and disconnecting the legacy requirements for the existing structures. Because again, in many cases, you've got an apple and an orange. And you have to decide, well, are we all going to be an orange going forward? Then all the apple dependencies have to be removed. And if you decide that you're going to be an, or an apple, then the orange loses. And if you decide you can't live without either, then you live in this world of apples and oranges, and you really don't have that synergy unless you bring in Radiant Logic and let us wrap all that in a watermelon and everything looks fine to the world as a watermelon, but inside you got apples and oranges and they're all happy. And then that's the, the power of Radiant Logic to do that join, do that union, and then publish that information out, whether it's to REST interfaces, to mobile devices, whether it's LDAP applications, whether it's uh, coupled with a uh, Cloud Federation service to go OAuth and OpenID Connect and SAML to SaaS applications, all this information is available. And there's a real power here to be able to do this with databases, to be able to bring information in from databases and be able to build them into a hierarchical model, to build relationships between that identity information and databases and make it available in a directory, both for the speed of authentication and authorization, for high availability, because databases may not always be available. If you've got a massive database that has really critical information in it, but every Sunday night for four hours it goes down for backup and, and archiving, 
you may not be able to operate a 24 by 7 company based on data being unavailable for four hours for authentication authorization. So you want to make that information available at Radiant Logic. But if we're storing a copy of that data, what happens if it updates? What do you do? Well, we listen on that back end in real time for changes. We can actually modify our stored data based on recognizing a change on the back end. If it's an AD change, we're looking at USN number. If it's a database change, it can be triggers, it can be timestamps, it can be redo logs. There's all sorts of different options for recognizing that a change has happened on the back end and reflecting that in near real time. So the information you're getting from Radiant is going to be as accurate as possible to the back end. But you always have the option, too, of making a direct query to the back end. We can always hop out the back and check the back end in real time um, if you've got that uh, performing back end that's highly available or you've got the time for that uh, delay, potentially, if there's latency issues. But in being able to bring all this information together across multiple platforms, I can not only build a rich global profile, I can build a relationship. I can build a context within this system. So for this model, Nancy and Laura are salespeople. They own particular accounts, Great American, uh, Great Outdoors and World Grocery. Those accounts have placed the orders. Those orders are for particular products. And if you look on the left-hand side there, that information came from four different sources that normally are completely unrelated. But because we have the ability to bring you into sort of a sandbox environment, build a common schema and infrastructure and understanding, be able to link information by attributes, we can build this hierarchy within the platform. So if you're doing a REST query back now and you say, hey, I want to know about all the things that Nancy sold, I can query Nancy and add context at the end of the REST query. And I'll get back a JSON response that has the full hierarchy of Nancy, her accounts, the orders, and the products delivered. So a mobile application, uh, a lightweight application, something running over a, a very uh, small wire or over the Internet, is going to be able to get back a tremendous amount of information with a single call. If you talk about an app developer, that capability, it eliminates for them so many recurring recursive calls of saying, give me Nancy. Okay, now I got Nancy. Give me all of Nancy's accounts. Okay, now that I have her accounts, give me all her orders. Okay, now that I have all the orders, give me all the products they ordered. Those repetitive calls from a tremendous overhead, and you can eliminate that with Radiant Logic. So the basic use case drivers here, security, integration, mergers, acquisitions, divestitures, reorganizations, change. Just think, if something's changing, which is constant, Radiant Logic is going to have a real powerful ability to make that change easier, faster, more efficient, to add value to your M&A, to actually get two synergistic company, two companies working together in a synergistic way much more quickly than traditional models that could take years. And we've done this over and over again. Uh, web access management and single sign-on and federation access to SaaS applications, again, at the end of the day, applications, whether they're access management applications, compliance and governance applications, or even just functional applications directly, they want to be able to go to one place to get all the access to all the attributes, the authentication authorization information they need from one location in exactly the format, exactly the structure and the schema and the protocol they want. And that's what Radiant Logic delivers simultaneously for different applications, and that's the real water to wine moment there where you start to recognize, wait a minute, this doesn't solve one problem, this solves a dozen problems, it actually solves a hundred problems. Because you start to see very quickly how this cascades across the system, how it removes these clues you work around so I can start sunsetting legacy directories that I stood up specifically for one application because it had some hinky requirements for the way the data was represented. I can do that all from one place. Well now I'm auditing fewer places. Now I'm doing provisioning to fewer places. Now I'm simplifying my review process. I'm making this all work better. And then from an authorization standpoint, smart groups, fine-grained authorization like we talked about, provisioning and syncing to the cloud is becoming critical now, especially moving to Azure. But any cloud application you go to, you have to end up provisioning applications to those clouds to be able to deliver that uh, user ability to authenticate and authorize to that cloud application. They are another silo of data. So not only do you have to provision to them, you have to update, synchronize, and now you probably want to pull that information back in so you can do it as station review and account compliance like you would with the sale point model. So once 
I've gotten done talking about what Radiant Logic does and how it does. Let's talk a little bit about how we integrate now with the SailPoint product, with the SailPoint Identity IQ, because this is the, the gist of today's conversation that I get to after half an hour. SailPoint has the ability to connect to multiple platforms. It has a connector set. It can do correlation of identities. It can bring information in. So basically, my my recommendation is there's, there's sort of, I see the world as two different types of environments. There's environments where SailPoint is there already, where SailPoint's in place, it's done connectivity, it's done aggregation, it's done work in the environment. That's not work you want to throw out and do over again. You want to be able to leverage that work. So if you look at the little arrow coming out of the Identity IQ repository database up to FID, you can leverage that work. Because where you want to leverage that work is I built this rich global profile in Identity IQ and I want to be able to use that for authentication and authorization, but Identity IQ is not designed for, as an access management server or to serve information for access management. It's designed for attestation, reporting, compliance, role mining, entitlement mining, and provisioning of those roles and entitlements throughout the organization. So now to make it a bill, give us the ability to use that investment you've made for authentication and authorization and use those rich profiles for controlling access, I want to join that information. I want to enhance that profile in Identity IQ with credential stores, with places I can validate IDs and passwords, with places I can validate two-factor authentication, with places I can validate credentials so that I can then take that rich profile and authentication and bring them together, authenticate the right user, and then use that information for authorization for cloud applications, for legacy applications, for web access management, for whatever may need to consume that information. And as, as Rusty pointed out earlier, I may take that information now and pipe it back into Identity IQ because there may be additional data from these additional sources that Identity IQ is going to benefit from having in its repository. But if you need to add credentials, authentication, authorization around the data you've built into Identity IQ, Radiant Logic is excellent at doing that. But there's the other half of the world. The other half of the world says, hey, you know, Radiant Logic is a foundational layer. It is a system that does tremendous amounts of identity correlation, cleanup, uh, unions, joins, brings all that information together, and that I want to put into place first, and then feed all the consumers of identity information, and Identity IQ and SailPoint being a consumer of identity information can then be fed directly from FID, as we saw in Rusty's example earlier. Now, um, Secure or Denny IQ can also write right back to FID, so you can use the tools within Identity IQ to build roles and entitlements and then enhance that data aggregation even further and feed that information back into FID. Now, Identity IQ is also a very powerful provisioning platform. It has approvals and role and entitlements and the ability to decide based on a particular event in an HR platform how I want to provision my users across all those endpoints. But I've connected to those endpoints through FID. I can now leverage those same connections, those same protocol agnostic standards-based connections that I'm using to populate FID through our identity correlation and synchronization engine to take the outflow of sale point provisioning requests and do the last mile provisioning to those endpoint systems, whether they be cloud-based, on-premise, database, directory. So you get a, a wrapper now that takes the powerful capabilities of Identity IQ and extends that by enhancing the profile collection attribution data cleanup and giving Identity IQ a much simpler, cleaner world to work with. And then the handoff from Identity IQ when they've done the provisioning, the authorization, all the workflows and entitlement work to then push out to those endpoints using that same connector set all the changes, updates, propagation that I need to do with a rules-based engine in ICS. So it really becomes a very powerful synergy here where you see an end-to-end -end capability of complete visibility, management down to the attribute level, correlation transformation, and the ability to understand your environment as never before, govern it as never before, and manage it and provision it as never before in a way that your end user experience is cleaner, faster, frictionless, your compliance is met, and your platform is extremely stable and extremely scalable. 
So just to wrap up, what we're talking about here with SailPoint and Radiant One is integration of value proposition and use case, uh, exposing uh, the identity IQ information to FID so you can use that for authentication and authorization, being able to use the information collected and, and correlated by FID to feed into identity IQ as another identity source, and the lifecycle manager within identity uh, within, within identity IQ being able to pull information from FID and then push that out to endpoints or push it out directly to ICS, let ICS do the last mile uh, configuration and deployment on that platform. So there's, a again, a tremendous value in both of these products together. Um, we, we've talked extensively with SailPoint. We're a SailPoint partner. They're very excited about the synergies that we see. We're excited about it. Uh, IDM Works has is, is got real world on the ground experience with this. So we invite you all to extend the conversation uh, and ask additional questions. There are a number of questions here that have been uh, put up on the board here and I'll go ahead and start asking some of those and Rusty and I will, uh, will address those. So Rusty, I assume you're still with me? Yep. Oh, excellent. Okay, so this question window is remarkably small, but let me see if I can uh, get to it here. Um, do you have documentation on how to implement SailPoint integration to represent user entitlements in Radiant Logic? Um, there are integration guides for Radiant Logic and SailPoint. Um, they are primarily around the uh, interchange of information, whether it's SailPoint pulling from Radiant Logic as an LDAP store or Radiant Logic uh, accessing data over SKIM through uh, the connection to the SailPoint at AIQ uh, repository. And there is the ability over that SKIM interface to extract entitlements. Um, and then within the Logic engine of Radiant Logic and the tools we have within Context Builder and uh, the other wizards, uh, you could use that information very easily to build or uh, represent the entitlements in, in Radiant Logic. So I think you should be able to find and be able to do that pretty quickly based on the documentation we have from the integrations we've done. Rusty, have you addressed that yourself in your own implementations of sort of taking sale point entitlements and representing them in Radiant Logic? Uh, the entitlements themselves, no. Um, we have taken other aspects of uh, the sale point integration and push them out, uh, but not the, the entitlements themselves. No. Okay, excellent. So yeah, I'm confident if, if it's not something that we've already fully documented, it's definitely something we can, we can work, work through and, and work with. The nice thing about Radiant Logic is that we really view um, attributes from a agnostic standpoint. Um, we don't necessarily see them as having to come from a certain place to be able to be operated with. So as we can work with any other entitlement, as we can build relationships between linkable uh, identity sources and, and, and attribute sets, we can do that with uh, the entitlements inside uh, NetIQ. Um, I, I, would, I would offer but, just quickly, if, if it's a part of a table, we can pull it. Uh, mm -hmm. That's... <laughs> Like, that's that's really it. Like if, if it's if it's exposed as a part of the table structure in SailPoint, we can grab it and display it. That's that's not an issue. Excellent. Yes, and, and that's and again that's perfect because we we again across whatever platform, if, if it's accessible, we can connect to it and we can operate with it. Um, the question here: If HR is SAP system, do customers use Radiologic connect directly to the SAP system database? That's really a cultural issue or decision. Uh, it depends. Some organizations, IT and HR, don't even know what building each other are in, so it's hard to get any data from them other than a flat file dump every midnight. Um, others can get HR to set up a, uh, a table, and they populate the table out of SAP, and we view that table, or we, we view that view of that table. And then in some scenarios, you could connect directly to the SAP database system, but I rarely find an HR platform that's willing to let uh, an active connection to their active tables. Um, if you can get it, we can consume it. But there are other options, and one is creating a view of that data. And you have complete control over the access that that uh, connector has. So the permissions you give 
our connector is, is the limits that we're going to be able to see. And you can filter as to what tables you want to make available, what information you share. So integrating with HR systems is not usually a concern, but I don't normally see it as a direct connection just because of the nature of uh, the way um, information is consumed. There's also a, a, an API through SAP where a lot of information can be called through their API, and we can use that API to connect if that's something that they prefer in that scenario. Have you done any SAP integrations, Rusty? I know it's not necessarily always the case because there's all a variety out there. Yep, so um, it turns out that a lot of SAP relies on ODBC. Um, I think they have a JDBC driver for SAP HANA, of all things. Um, but I, the, the, the takeaway here is that so long as we can get a hold of a JDBC driver, um, we can typically integrate with it quickly. If it involves using a REST interface, then we have to navigate the API and start building out custom, uh, custom Java to interface with it, uh, which can be um, potentially messy, but it, it, it can be done. Yeah, and I think that's the, and again, that's the case you're going to run into with, with any, any integration. Um, an LDAP call, a JDBC call, is going to be the fastest and the easiest and, and the most efficient. You go back to web services, you go back to REST, things are a little slower. There's a little bit more integration work there, potentially. Uh, it depends on the, on the API. But um, connectivity, if it's available, you can definitely get to that data. What's nice about Radiant Logic is even if that connection to the back end is slow, if you've got um, overhead in, in that process, because we can store the information, we can make it available at the Radiant Logic level at the speed of a directory. We can listen for changes on the back end if it's supported, and you don't have to worry about the, the inherent weight of pulling that information across a, a web services connection that's traditionally going to be a little bit more difficult than a direct LDAP or, or JDBC connection. Um, can we use the Radiant Logic model to do writes? Yes, you can, and there's two scenarios for that. FID, and there was a question earlier, was what is FID? Federated Identity service is FID. It is a rebranding of our VDS, Virtual Directory Server. It's the combination of the HDAP store, the ability to store information locally in a highly available cluster-based technology based on big data, and that blue logical sphere, the powerful logic engine does all the manipulation. That gives you FID, the Federated Identity Service, the solution there. You can write through FID, so if you write an update to us and we are proxying a back end or we are um, Connected to a back end, we can write that down to the back end if you choose. One thing you need to be aware of, if you've built an aggregation, so I've aggregated 380 domains and I'm taking the multi-value of city field, instead of showing city from each different domain, I've put one city field there um, and I'm representing uh, the data based on rules as terms of what's shown Domain A is always represented, domain B is only show as its data if domain A is not available. When I'm writing through the city, I have to decide, well, am I going to uh, write to all three domains? Am I going to write to just the primary domain? Am I going to write to the domain that's empty? So you have to have a little bit more logic in the writing back if you've built a, a global profile. But you can build individual views. You can directly write through to the back end. If the account we have to access that back end has the ability to do writes and updates. In addition to that, as I mentioned in the diagram, ICS, our Identity Correlation and Synchronization Engine, is a full rules-based provisioning synchronization platform that allows you to recognize an event, uh, users created, uh, accounts updated, a flag has been set, and based on that event, that action, we can then kick off a workflow within the system that will go ahead and update, provision, deprovision, modify, uh, synchronize information, identity data across any of the endpoints based on a whole bunch of logical models, including a bunch of rules. If you're in sales and your title has got VP in it and you're in Chicago, then this is the result of that change. If you're something else, you get a different result. So there's a real powerful model there for writing to endpoints. And again, that can be an extension off of the sale point workflow if you choose, or it can be something written directly to Radiant Radiant can then propagate it out. Um, <clears throat> let me check another question here. 
Uh, can Radiologic use secrets from CyberArk ID Vault to connect to AD or other databases? Yes, we have done a CyberArk integration. Um, there's two models for CyberArk in terms of integrating credentials. There's a push and there's a pull. We have both of those integrations uh, available and documented. So um, we are able to support CyberArk in that scenario for uh, service accounts, the connecting uh, credential accounts that we use for accessing those uh, resources on the back end. So if you've got a full CyberArk deployment, that's how you're protecting your environment radiological plug right into that. Um, oh, can you show the architectural diagram of RadiantLogic uh, and NetIQ one more time to explain the flow? Um, yeah, I, I, I should actually, I can probably get back to that if I think about it. There we go. So this is this is one of the two models. This is the Radiant Logic uh, connecting to the back end model here. So I have all my sources of identity, AD domains, directories, LDAP directories, uh, identity, the additional identity objects coming from APIs, applications, Salesforce, whatever it might be that I'm connecting to, brought into Radiant Logic's FID, and in there we are going to do whatever level of correlation aggregation. Uh, data cleanup, normalization, whatever you want to do to manipulate the information, you have complete control over that information, what it looks like, what you label things, how you create the views, multiple different views. And we're going to create a view for uh, Identity IQ. So we're going to take that information and we're going to, we're going to present it to Identity IQ in the way you want Identity IQ to see that information. So if you want Identity IQ to look at, at an aggregated AD environment, we can pull all the ADs together and present one global profile. If you want it to look like a, a hierarchical tree of nested AD domains, we can present it that way. Um, it's just how you want that information optimized for, com for being consumed by Identity IQ. And again, normalizing and cleaning up that data, as Rusty mentioned, so that Identity IQ can absorb that information and use that data for its role mining and entitlement management and group uh, development, uh, deciding on the provisioning for roles and, and all the attestation and governments and review information and this manager belongs to this user. That can be something that's generated in Radiant Logic or generated in Identity IQ. You can sort of decide where you want to do that effort and what makes the most sense and what's easiest. And then in this particular scenario, because we're already connected to the back end, ICS and FID work together. They share the same connection strings. They share the same understanding of the schemas on the databases and, and the structures on the back ends and the protocols. So anything that we've connected to to consume information from, we can also write back to using ICS. And instead of just writing through FID, ICS gives you the ability to a tremendous amount of rules-based uh, workflow based on a single event. So this user was created, he's given this role and this description and these entitlements from Identity IQ, handed over to ICS, and then ICS can modify that information for each endpoint based on what that endpoint needs and how it needs to see that information differently to get the result you want in those endpoints customized to each application requirement. And we've done this at a large credit card organization where they're using mainframes and multiple sysplexes that had to be provisioned, each one was provisioned differently based on one event in HR. So we were able to propagate that information and customize that data and deploy it after it was presented to us by Identity IQ. Let's see. I think we're a little bit past the top of the hour. I do have a lot of questions here. Um, and uh, what we will do is we will go ahead and respond to these, Rusty and I, over email. Uh, back to everyone. In fact, we may make these questions available to everybody because there's a lot of really good ones here that may be helpful for everyone to hear and make sure that you do get a response back from us. You are going to get also a link of the recording of our presentation today and a set of the slides that Rusty and I presented. We'll be doing another webinar in two weeks, so I invite you to watch your email for another invitation. We'll continue this conversation and expand it out even further into the identity space. And if you have any further questions, definitely reach out to Rusty at Identity Works. For us, reach out to your representative at Radiant Logic, um, or us directly. We'd be more than happy to answer those questions, talk through use cases, understand what your challenges are, and see how much we can get SailPoint and Radiant working together to solve your problems. Thank you, everyone, yeah. and have a great rest of your afternoon. Rusty, thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you for having me. Have a great one, guys.